chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. And we are going to study five verses this morning. Yay! <laughs> you know me, I'm uh, notorious for studying long study. But five verses this morning. And so I entitled the message this morning, The Council at Jerusalem, Part 3. Now, before I go there, please allow me to pray. Father God, I ask now that you, that you empower me now with your Holy Spirit. Lord, give me ability to communicate to my brothers and sisters the things that you laid in my heart. And so I pray, God, that they will be able to understand and receive it. And so we pray, Lord, that you anoint each and every one of us. Anoint me as your speaker this morning and anoint them as a, uh, uh, anointed listeners this morning. So God, help us now into our study. Guide us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Now let me refresh you uh, a little bit of the background, what's going on in chapter 15. We know there's a problem because in verse 1 it says, And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And we know that these certain men, they came from the sect of the Pharisees in verse 5. They were believers, if you would, and sometimes we call them legalists or Judaizers. In, in, in the Bible college, they will call them Judaizers. You know, the problem that they have is this, because they're Jews, they cannot receive that the Gentiles are being saved as well. Does that make sense to you folks? Now what they wanted to do is for the Gentiles to be circumcised first and follow the laws of Moses in order for them to be saved. And that is not the gospel of grace. Amen. Are you with me? Right? It's because uh, in order for us to be saved, it's just faith alone in Christ Jesus. Correct? Now, and so... Um, Paul and Barnabas have this major debate against these certain men who came down from Judea. Who came from Judea. And so, you know, because the argument is so hot, you know, that, that the, the church in Antioch, Syria, they sent Paul and Barnabas to the church in Jerusalem can I say this? The mother church, if you would, to correct this doctrine. Does that make sense? And now, remember, the apostles, the council in Jerusalem, wrote a letter for the church in Antioch. Can I read to you again the letter, folks, so that we can have the clear understanding once again? Now, they wrote this letter. The apostles, the elders, and the brethren, it's on verse 23, by the way. To the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with, the, with words, unsettling your soul, saying, You must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. If, or it seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have raised their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. Now, here's the, uh, the solution to the problem. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Now notice, it's necessary things. Okay? They're necessary. That you, remember there's four of them, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well, farewell. That is the letter, folks. 
simple solution. Now, so that you can understand the letter, let me give you the background of the church in Antioch, Syria. The church in Antioch, Syria is not just a Jewish church. It's a mixed church. Are you with me? Most of it, folks, the Antioch, Syria, most of the members were Gentiles. And Gentiles eat whatever they want. Amen. Now, Filipinos, we eat whatever we want. There's no dietary law for us. Whatever it moves, we eat. <laughs> we cook. You know. No offense, I'm Filipinos. Okay. Now, we have delicacies. We eat balut. You know. We eat dinoguan. Right? In northern Philippines, there's this food they call pinikpikan. You know? Oh, brother uh, Martin is there, uh, from there, and sister uh, Venus, and uh, from the Ilocanos up north, right? That uh, before they will cook the chicken, they have to beat that rooster or hen until the blood will coagulate or whatever, you know? But that's delicacies, you see? But here's the thing, folks, why am I going there? But the Gentiles, they don't have restrictions like the Jews on their dietary law. But here's the problem. What's going on there is this. That every time they eat and have a love feast like what we do after service, okay? They call it love feast or potluck sometimes, all right? Now, the Gentiles will bring their own food and the Jews work. Obviously, they're eating some food that has blood in it. Does that make sense? How do we know that? Because it, uh, they address it in their letter. The council. But it says there, look, it says. Um, where is that? Verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. Now, Two of the council's requirements involve issues of morality. Basically, avoiding idolatry and sexual immorality. We know that's not right. Amen. That's moral issues. But the other two issues is of food, which can basically stumble your fellow Christians. Because you are not all Gentiles. Now, if there were all Gentiles in the sanctuary, they can eat whatever they want. But the problem is, not all were Gentiles. They were Jews there. And so, basically, the letter is this. is Be aware of other believers. Does that make sense? Remember, and we have studied about that last week. Now, some of you thought that I, I destroyed them. <laughs> Dinoguan, eating dinoguan, no. Dinoguan, you can, now for the, uh, uh, for our American brothers and sisters, dinoguan is a pork blood soup. Okay? Now, now here's the thing. No, you can still eat that if you want. I'm not telling you not to eat it. But be aware, there might be people like the Iglesia de Cristo's uh, sect, they don't eat that. And if there's the Nubuan, there's some Iglesia de Cristo there. Just kind of go look at it for a moment. <laughs> when they're gone, <laughs> yeah. you know, for there, remember, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, you do this because of their conscience, not your conscience. With you, Paul says, we know food is nothing and idols are nothing, he says. Right? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. Amen? Because others' conscience. Now, if you have the same, all of you have the same conviction, then enjoy it. Tear it up! You know? Tear it up! Oh, I think that's a kind of ghetto uh, stuff, but, you know, I came from the ghetto. So, anyway, now... But I want to point out to you this morning, the early church faced a crisis because of its great diversity. People 
um, with wildly uh, different backgrounds, beliefs, and behaviors. These were the old church. What about the modern church? How can we put this in our situation now? The modern church also faces an ongoing crisis of diversity. Our congregations, not just this, congregations in general, but modern church, are filled with people who have wildly different convictions with regard to all kinds of behavior. Can I give you some example? Please say amen. Okay, let me give you some example. Uh, by the way, can I say this first? There are certain things, like I told you before last week, that is not really addressed in the Bible. We call them black and or gray areas. Now, there's black and white, it's very clear. There are some gray areas that it's not really addressed in the Bible. Such as, here are the example, okay? Ready? Going to movies. Some Christians, they're convicted. Their convictions are, oh, we're not going to watch a movie anymore. You know? But I don't have that conviction, folks. You see what I'm saying? You okay? Now, um, others are uh, political party affiliation. Oh, I'm Democrat. Mm, really? I'm Republican. I mean, those are kind of things are gray area, okay? Does that make, make sense? Big now is homeschooling. It might not affect us here, but other big churches, it affect them, okay? Homeschooling. Gambling, which we don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Working on Sunday. Right? It's our convictions. Working on Sunday. TV viewing habits. Money borrowing. You know? And, and I don't know why this is on my list. It's like child rear. You know? It's very clear in Proverbs. You know? Some church are kind of having division about this. I should, you should be spanking your child. And the other one says, no, 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 no. This is in the Bible. But, but the truth is, it's in the Bible. Proverbs. Right? So, what else? That uh, stay-home mom or working mom. Now it's, uh, it's becoming a, a, a conviction problem in the modern church now. Okay? What else? Uh, uh, dating. Dating. You know. Well, I don't have that problem with conviction when I'm single. In fact, I use my freedom a lot on that part. Forgive me, Lord. Preferences in music. Okay? Right? I can't believe you, you're listening to that kind of music. And then the other one. Why not? I'm a musician. I have to expand my order. You see? Does that make sense? All of these are great areas for What else? What else? Uh, some are drinking. Now, Folks, all these things that I mentioned, we can let those differences divide us, but they don't have to, right? All these differences, folks, can divide us, but they don't have to. If we just apply what the Word of God says. Correct, folks? Now, let's learn from this. For those of us who love to enjoy our freedom in Christ, we have an obligation first to show love. First, first to show love. Can I give you an example? All right. Let's say it is not your conviction, you know. Like for me, drinking is my conviction. I can drink. Oh, mom, don't use this against me. I can't believe your pastor is a drunkard. You know, nothing like that. Okay. Let's say, that's not my conviction. Okay. Now, if I know someone is stumbles, if I drink my glass of wine, guess what? That glass of wine will turn into dust if 
before I'm intrigued if I know that that person is stuck with me, by me, if I drink and take this glass of Does that make sense? Because I love that brother. I love this sister. I don't want to cause her to stumble. And remember what our Lord Jesus said? If you cause someone to stumble, the little ones, you know, it's better for you <laughs> to hang a little stump around your neck and take you down to the sea. Well, that's no cool. That's no cool. Does that make any sense to you folks? Now, what else? You know, you can you can make all kinds of illustration of what I just gave you. But the most important thing is this. If we love to enjoy our freedom in Christ, we have to show love first before you do things. Okay? Does that make sense, folks? What do I mean by that? Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 14, verse 14 to 21. Now, these are not my words, okay? Listen to the Apostle Paul in Romans 14, verse 14 to 21. He said there, I know and I'm convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who is considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Does that make sense to you, folks? It means all things are lawful for me, Paul says, right? But if someone says this is unclean, guess what? It will become unclean because of your conscience. Does that make sense? Now, verse 15, Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Oh my. What is Paul is saying here? You can sacrifice that food because your brother, if you take that food and your brother will be stumbled because of you taking that food, guess what? That is not cool. That is not love. You see? Do not destroy your food. Or do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Conclusion, therefore do not let your good be spoken as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I say this to you? This is not only for the food, folks, and drink. Okay? Even activities. Okay? Even certain activities that is not in the Bible that you can tell it's a gray area. I mean, if it will cause your brothers or sisters to stumble um, when they're dead, don't do it. Don't do it. Because if you stumble them, you know what the Bible says? Christ died for them also. You see that? Now look at verse 18. For he who serves Christ in these things I, or is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify one another. Oh, I love that. Look at that. Peace and the word edify. Now, in other words, pursue peace instead, you know. If it causes him to stumble, that is not peace anymore. That is not edifying anymore. You know, and we will learn more on this things, okay? Now, look at this. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offense. Now, here's the thing. Look at this verse 21. It is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Wow. Guess what? If my brother will trip because of me eating this certain food, guess what? I will not eat that food. All of this face going to say. When he's around, in my translation. But when he's not around, you can eat. It's not saying don't eat it there, you know. It's not saying just don't eat it there or what if you know this will cause, uh, if you know that your brother will be tricked by that. Don't do that anymore. Do you understand Christians? 
Let's say, how about if it's not food? How about certain habits that you do? Oh, I don't know what kind of habit that you do. Let's say certain habits that you do. Okay, you know your brother or your sister is stripping on that. Will you still do it? You can do it when he or she is not around. If it's not a sin. Is that very clear? If it's not a sin, folks, I mean, you can still do it, but there are things that, there are things that are not sins that we do, but yet it causes others to stumble. Amen? Amen? Are you with me? Now, here's the thing, folks. Remember I told you last week, the responsibility is always with the mature Christian and the baby Christian. Now, for the mature ones, then I can sacrifice my glass of wine or this kind of food for the sake of my brother, to win my brother. Amen. For why would I destroy my relationship with my brother or my sister? I know already he's getting stumbled by me doing this. Because sometimes we can say like this, well, I'm not sinning. Now, if you're one of the I'm not sinning, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I had to put that in there. You know, in, in the hands, you're doing anything wrong, you know, kind of, you know, you know what I mean? But that's kind of pride, folks, isn't it? That's pride. You can say that's true, you're not sinning if you're doing this. But if you destroy the conscience of your brother and sister, you still do it. And the Bible says Christ died for them also. Wow. What a relationship is in it. If we are willing to sacrifice, remember, Paul says, love is this. Love does not seek its own, but others will be in Oh my. That's heaven. This is maturity, what we're talking about here, folks. Amen. Do you agree with me on this? Amen. Now, now, folks, now for those who has different conviction, now let's say you're on the other side of the fence now. You're the one who's like, hmm, still doing it, kind of like this. This should be your attitude. Because I have to look at both ways. There's some people who love to enjoy their freedom in Christ, and there's some people who just kind of Stay there, and some, some people I felt like they're just hot watching for those gray areas that other Christians will do it so that they can use it against them. You know what I mean? Here's my lesson for you. If you're one of them, I hope not. Okay. Here's the lesson there. We have different convictions, and so resist the urge to judge others. Can I hear you? Resist the urge judge others. You know. Does that make sense, folks? And again, do not be dogmatic where the Bible is not, folks. You know, again, there's a gray area, and do not be dogmatic on those gray areas, because the Bible did not address them. And the solution for that, if you're on the other side of the fence, that you demonstrate, here we go, Demonstrate grace. That you demonstrate grace. Can you think with me? If this on the other side of the fence who love to enjoy their freedom, thinks about this Christian brothers and sisters who they know that they have a different conviction on what they do. They're careful on how they do things when they're around. And these, this here, they they remove the judgmental part of these people who love to enjoy their freedom. And they demonstrate grace. Look at the harmony. Man, that is amazing. Do you see that, folks? If we think like that, if both sides of the fence do their part, man, where church will be healthy. There's no division. There's no splitting up going on. Amen? Does that make sense, folks? All right. Now, let's continue on. Verse 30, it says, So when they were sent off, 
they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter. Now, the word they, on verse 30, the first they there was Paul, Barnabas, Silas, and Judas, were sent off from Jerusalem. They came to Antioch, Syria, the Gentile church that has Jewish population also. And when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter. Now, what letter? The one we read already, right? Now, when they had read it, read it they rejoiced over its encouragement. Wow. What? They what, folks? They rejoiced over its encouragement. Who rejoiced there? Who's they there? The church in Antioch, Syria, the Gentiles and Jewish believers in that church, they received it, in other words. They submitted to the authority of the council of the church in Jerusalem. Does that make sense? Come on, are you with me? Now, look how both Christian Jews and Gentiles responded to the authority of the council at Jerusalem. The Jews could have said, that's it, only four requirements and no circumcision for the Gentiles. They could have said that, right? They could say, that's it. Only four things. And no circumcision. The Gentiles could have squawked. What do you mean, give up our favorite foods? That's ridiculous. You elders of Jerusalem church came into the legalists. Then they could have said, we thought Christianity was supposed to be based on liberty and freedom. But thank God, they did not respond like that. You see it? How the believers in Antioch responded to the council's letter demonstrate to the world the real character of the church. Folks, they just submitted themselves to what the councils agreed upon. They could have made all these excuses you give them only four things to follow and we Jews have to do all of this, the dietary law and all that, you know. And the Gentiles could have said, you're taking away our favorite food, our delicacies, eating blood, strangled animals. You're taking away these things. But they did not respond to like that. Amen. You know when they read the letter, the Bible said, they rejoice over its encouragement. Now what would that mean for the Jews, folks? Well, the Jews, here's the lesson there, folks. The Jews, they have to learn how to sacrifice both sides, isn't it? Sacrificing is real good, folks. Can I say this to you? If I can win my brother back, if I can win my relationship back to my brother, I will sacrifice what I need to sacrifice. If it's only food, oh man, so be it. That is so easy for me to take it. If it's my drink, so be it. I will sacrifice it so I can have a better relationship with my brother or my sister. Will you able to do that? If it's a certain habit that you do, oh, I will sacrifice that just to win them. Just to win them. Just to just not to break that relationship with them. Because, you know what? It's kind of soft when, when Christians here on earth, if you would, okay. <laughs> I mean, we belong to the same body and we don't have a great relationship because of the things that you love to do. That's terrible, isn't it? They could be. They could be. Oh, man, the mind your business. This is my hobby. Well, wrong, you know. <laughs> Both. Both, because my brother loves you know. Or, you know, my you know, I mean, if my hobby will break your, our relationship,
relationship. You're not up there hiding. I love my brother. That's love, folks. That's love. That's maturity. Does that make sense, folks? Now, here's the thing, folks. Defiance would likely cause a split. <laughs> if, if the Jews and the Gentiles in the church in Antioch, Syria, they don't agree. I don't want to submit to this. It will split the church in Antioch, Syria. Amen? You know what I've learned from them? I think the solution that I've seen here, we can apply this to each and every one of us. Two things. Sacrifice and submission. Sacrifice and submission to the authority. First of all, sacrifice. Jews had no longer insisted that the Gentiles had to become circumcised to be saved. And also, here, and the Gentiles accepted a change in their eating habits for the sake of the Jewish believers with them. Does that make sense? Is that very cool? Look, both of them sacrificed, but in the end, because they were willing to sacrifice, now they're united. You see? Unity, folks, is different. I have a, I have a note here about unity in my, in Philippians, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, I took unity, um, united in the midst of diversity. Okay? United in the midst of diversity. Does that make sense? Look, you can be diverse, but still unite, united. Because you know each other's uh, uh, weakness, and you make allowance on the other's weakness. And those who have weakness, or what, they can be helped by these people who are strong in that, that their weaknesses. Does that make sense? Is that very cool? So, you see that there has to be sacrifice, folks. The number two submission is this. So they fix this by uh, sacrifice and submission. By everyone submitting to the council order, even if they have to sacrifice, even if they have to sacrifice. You know, sometimes, folks, we just have to submit to remain that close knit together. Does that make sense? You know, there are things sometimes, I know, there are times, can I put this in our church? Sometimes when I make decision and the elders make decision, it might not be agreeable to everyone. But we know, folks, the reason why we talk always in the back is to think what is best and pray for what is best for the whole body of Christ. Now, sometimes what is best for, we think, for the whole body of Christ here at C4, it's not what is best for you, or maybe two, three, five of you. Does that make sense? But what do you have to do? Let's say there's five of you. Do you have a union gathered together? Just, I don't know. I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree. No. They didn't do that. They just said it. And there's, they just accept that they need to sign it. They just accept the fact that I need to sacrifice because for the sake of others, not for me. You know, most of the time we complain because we think it's not for us. Amen? We think it's not for us. But, but what if it's for your brother? Love does not seek itself. It seeks first the well-being of others. Amen. If we have that attitude, folks, consistently, wow, we're going to be united. Amen. If we apply these things. Amen. <coughs> look, look at them. They solve the problem, folks. If you want a harmonious body that had a sense of order and stability, you need to sacrifice and submit. That's 
take folks. If you don't want to sacrifice and you don't want to submit, it's going to be difficult to have order. Amen. We have laws in the land. Amen, folks. We have a speed laws, right? There's limit. Now, if all of us here we don't agree on that speed limit and drive 300 miles per hour on a 65 miles uh, freeway, guess what? There's going to be an accident. Amen. We agree. Most of us here in the land we follow the speed limit, especially me. If it's 65, it's 65. 6,500 miles per hour. I'm not even done yet. You start to cry, huh? <laughs> you know, but even if we follow the speed limit and only two or three mess up with the speed limit, it creates a big mess, isn't it? But folks, rules were given to follow for the body of Christ. For, for, for the sense of order and stability in the body of Christ. Did you guys learn something, folks? And that's what this council did. They ordered basically the Gentiles, you need to sacrifice certain food because there's Jews in your church. Now, Jews, you need to stop saying that they need to be circumcised because they were Gentiles. You just have to accept the fact that both Jews and Gentiles were saved by faith in Christ Jesus. Did you guys learn something? <laughs> Will you all please stand uh, and let's pray. Before I pray, I want, um, we will have some videos later on after I pray and after we collect uh, our tithes and offerings. Videos and pictures what we have done last year in our church. And the reason why I'm taking pictures, folks, and we appointed certain people to take pictures in our church is so that we can have this, you know, so that we can show you in the video what we have done. Now, in these videos uh, later on that we will show, um, let me say this. We, as a church, we donated the church Van, our church van to another nonprofit organization, but we still have one church van. Amen? Does that make sense? Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much, Lord, for teaching us uh, maturity this morning. Now, Lord, we pray that you brand these things into our hearts. And Lord, I forgot the, to read one more passage for them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 through 13, I will read it for them just to supplement what I have uh, uh, taught them this morning. Paul says to the Corinthians, But beware lest somehow this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will not the conscience of him who is weak be emboldened to eat those things offered to idols? And because of your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when you thus sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat, Paul says, lest I make my brother stop. God, I pray, Lord, again, this topic this morning is not just for food. This can relate to a lot of things, oh God. But that doesn't mean Christian life is boring. Actually, it's even more exciting. Lord, the lesson is maturity, sacrifice, submission, watching how we enjoy our freedom, resist the
the urge to become judgmental to others' activities and to demonstrate the grace of love for our Father. What a lesson that you have taught us this morning. I pray that you bring these things into each and every one of us. Lord, my desire for this church and your desire for this church is for us to grow mature spiritually. Thank you so much. Now, Lord, before I pray for the thoughts and offering, there are some of us here would like to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. This is the opportunity, O oh God. I pray that I will give them opportunity. If there are some of us here who are walking, not rightly with you, God, I pray, I pray that you give them another chance this morning. So brothers and sisters, bow your heads and close your eyes. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or perhaps you want to recommit your life back to Christ, if this is you, will you please raise your hand and I will lead you to simple prayer. God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? I can't see your hand if you're good. Please raise them. Like anyone else? Lord Jesus, I am recommitting my life back to you. Lord, thank you for another chance. Thank you for making me new. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for touching my life right now. Thank you so much, man. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.